Okay, let's get into a demo of this feature in action. Our use case here is a product catalog API, and we're going to test it using an OpenAPI 3 document. Note that the current provider contracts that Packflow supports is just an OpenAPI spec, and we'll be adding support for different types of contracts over time. The provider API is going to be written in Java and Spring Boot, and we're going to use Rest Assured, uh, the API testing tool, to make sure that the code is compatible with that spec. On the consumer side, we're going to have a Java product API client, and we're going to use Wiremock as the mocking tool to test this client. We're then going to use Cano Deploy to gate release, and we're going to see what happens uh, to break things and how Packflow will detect the breaking changes and prevent you from breaking production. Okay, now that we've got a handle on our use case, let's build out our consumer code. Opening up our project here, you can see a domain model for product on the consumer side. It has an ID, a name, a type, and a price. And we have a product client, which is going to be uh, the piece of code that's responsible for making the call from our product uh, client to the product API. And you can see we have methods for creating a product, getting a single product, and getting a list of products. Uh, zooming into the get product method here, we can see we're using an HTTP client to make a call to forward slash product forward slash some ID, accepting a uh, JSON, and we're going to convert that JSON body back into a domain model here. If we look at our uh, unit test here, we're going to use Wiremock, as we said, to mock out our backend. Uh, we're also going to use a little tool from Atlassian called, uh, which is a mock, uh, a Wiremock packed generator, which will take all the requests we make to Wiremock and convert them into a packed file, which is going to become our consumer contract. Uh, the rest of this is a fairly standard packed, uh, sorry, st standard unit test. And as you can see here, uh, there's, se there's several methods we're going to test. Zooming into one of these unit tests, you can see a call to get product. And we're going to test um, use that particular method. So here we're going to follow the arrange, act, and assert model, where we first use Wiremock to stub the back end or mock the back end. And given a request to forward slash product forward slash 10, we're going to get back uh, a JSON body. We're then going to use our API client and get it to communicate to the Wiremock server instead of the real live provider. And we're going to call get product passing through ID 10. And then we're going to check uh, you know, assertions on this response. We're going to make sure that it was able to convert into the domain model, uh, correctly deserialize uh, the JSON that comes over the wire and make sure that we can do things with that product. For example, get the ID. And we're going to repeat that for all of the, of the different methods here um, that we'd like to test, and of course, all the scenarios we'd like to test. Um, and at the end of this, we'll produce a contract file we can use as the consumer contract. So coming back to our pipeline for a second, what's going to happen is after we push this code up, our pipeline is going to run the consumer test we just saw. It's going to produce a packed file, which we're going to upload to Packflow. This is called our consumer contract. We're then going to call can I deploy on that to see if it's safe to release this application to production. Of course, we can't do that yet. The provider is not in production. That means it's not safe to make this change. So I have a little tool locally that I can run that we can use to emulate that CI process uh, on my laptop, laptop, just so we don't have to go and look at builds and watch them pass. Um, in my shell, I have the correct uh, API token and the URL to communicate to Packflow. So a unit test just passed then. We've published the contract to Packflow. And then the can I deploy step just failed. And it failed because the provider doesn't exist in production and therefore it's not safe to release this change. If we head across back into our code very quickly and go into the build packs directory, we can now see that it's generated a contract based on those wire mock definitions. So you can see the three integrations here or three tests that are going to be covered as part of our contract test. If we head into the packed user interface and do a refresh here, we should see a new integration appear between uh, our client, which is called the uh, Wiremock client to our rest assured provider. And you can see that the contract is currently unverified. We published it a few seconds ago and it's got a few um, integrations that we're testing. And now that we have our consumer test, what we can do is we can now do the same thing for our provider. We can implement the provider code base, we can add the test for it, and then we can run the provider pipeline. So the first thing we should look at is the open API spec. So let's have a look at the open API document. We can see that we've got several endpoints here. We've got uh, the pluralized endpoint where we can create a new one and get all of the, all the products. 
and we have a single endpoint. Um, and yes, we know about the inconsistency between this. It's designed for a workshop where we can evolve this. And you can see we have a get for a single product um, using forward slash product forward slash ID. And they all use a single schema object called the product down here to send the request and also receive the request. Quickly looking at some other aspects of our implementation without going into detail. We have a Spring Boot app and we have a controller here to get all the products, create a product, get a single product and so on. And finally, let's have a look at our test code. So over here again, we're going to use a standard Spring Boot uh, JUnit test here. Uh, some key things here though, we're going to also use a plugin, yet again from Atlassian, that's going to use uh, our OpenAPI document, read that in, and make sure that any requests we make to our provider locally using Rest Assured are actually going to be compatible with that spec. And so we can use a unit testing tool like this to run a series of tests against our locally running Spring Boot application or our locally running provider to verify the provider contract. And going down here, we can see we have a series of tests against our locally running provider to check that it's compatible uh, with the specification. So in this case, we're going to check that we can create a product with this, this definition. We're going to check that we can create a product with a bad request. We're going to get products. We're going to modify products and so on. And when we do all those checks, the Atlassian filter is going to make sure that our request and more importantly, the response from the provider is compatible with that open API specification. So let's have a look at the pipeline for the provider. What we're going to do is when we push this change up, we're going to verify the open API spec using rest assured. We're going to publish that open API spec to Packflow along with the verification results. We're going to run the can I deploy check to say, is it safe to release this provider to production? And then we're going to deploy the change if that passes. So let's again, we have a, that handy utility locally to run the pipeline locally and make sure that our provider is compatible with the open API spec and importantly, is not going to break any consumers. So there, there's a test running now. That'll be the rest assured library issuing a series of tests against the locally running provider that they've just passed. We're then going to use a bash script uh, to upload that contract to Packflow. And because the can I deploy check pass, which is this computer says yes statement here, we then deploy our provider to production and we tell Packflow that we've done that. So if we now refresh this integration point, we should see that it's successfully verified. The provider has been deployed to production. And if we view our contracts here, we can now actually also see that the consumer contract is there. And we also have a provider contract now. And you can see the Swagger definition for that there, as well as any test log, test output there. Now we haven't actually uploaded the rest assured log there, but you, you can do that as well. And in our contract comparison tab, we can see that the integration is successful. There are no problems. And that's why the provider was able to deploy to production. Okay, so now that our, our provider has been deployed pr to production, we can now go back to our consumer code base and simply rerun this test. Now that the provider is in production, we know it's going to be safe to make this change. And we're going to repeat the, the pipeline again on the consumer side. We're going to run the tests, publish the contract, run can I deploy, except this time it should pass because uh, the provider is in production and more importantly, that provider satisfies the needs of this consumer. And so we can deploy the consumer because it's safe. So if we go back to that terminal command I just ran to repeat that pipeline, we can now see that the can I deploy check has passed and it's safe to release this change to production. So we do deploy it to production and also we record that deployment as having gone to production. So again, if we head back to Packflow, excuse me, uh, we can now see after a little refresh that both the consumer and the provider have now been released to production. So what we just learned then is during this can I deploy step, what actually goes on is that Packflow is going to check the version of the application you're deploying against the versions of the applications it needs to integrate to into the target environment and does what we call cross contract validation. It's where it checks that in this case, the consumer contract is a valid subset of the provider contract. And if the consumer added something that the provider doesn't support, it will fail the consumer's build. But it also does this on the provider as well. So the next time the provider does a deployment or makes a change, 
The same pipeline is going to run, except this time around, now that there is consumers, it's going to make sure that the provider cannot push a change out that will break or be incompatible with its existing consumers. And it would prevent that change. So let's now look at what might happen if we go to the provider and make a backwards incompatible change. So if I CD into our provider code base and I apply a previous change, which will remove a field that the consumer uses, in this case, we're going to remove the price field. We're going to take it out of the open API document and we're going to comment it out of the domain model. And this means that price will always be null or undefined uh, through verification. So if I again rerun this uh, pipeline locally, I should show now that by removing the price field, it will actually break one of our consumers. Uh, in this case, the, the Wiremock consumer. So what we saw there is that the provider is compatible with its own spec. But importantly, the spec has changed in such a way now that it's not compatible with its consumers. And Packflow has uh, alerted us to that fact and has, has basically failed our build locally. And if we go across to Packflow now and drill into it and just do a little refresh there, oh, excuse me, we should see that the contract comparison tab now shows that the the contract is incompatible. So the provider contract is good. The, the provider is consistent with its um, itself and its open API spec, but the provider contract is not compatible with the consumer contract. And this tab here is telling us that the main issue is that the, the consumer needs price, the provider doesn't have price, and now they're no longer compatible. So that's quite, that's quite good. We've now uh, been able to prevent a breaking change. Okay, so let's revert that change. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna show what happens if you remove a field that the consumer doesn't use and see what happens there. So if we go into our code base and we comment out version from, from the domain model and we also remove version from the open API spec, what we can do is we can see what would happen if you remove a field from the, the provider that a consumer doesn't actually need. Uh, and what we'll find here is this will uh, be allowed to go through. So even though it's it's technically a backwards incompatible change as far as semantic version is concerned, it doesn't matter here because our consumer doesn't need that property. So it's a totally safe operation to remove that property. And of course, that, that extends all the way down to you know, to endpoints or anything like that. And so with, with this particular feature, you can get the granularity down to the field level about which each individual consumers are using and what changes are safe or not safe. Okay, so now that you've seen the feature in action, uh, how can we learn more about this and what's the best way to get started? So you should head to docs.packflow.io where you're gonna find a bunch of information about this particular feature, including the feature documentation, hands-on tutorials and labs, uh, detailed workshops, and example projects that you can use uh, as guides to help you run it on your own project. If you're an existing Packflow customer, you can head to packphoto.io forward slash sign in and, and log in there, or obviously head to your tenant domain and you can log in as you did before. Uh, if you're new to Packflow, head to packphoto.io forward slash try for free, create yourself a new account. Uh, it's free forever and you have up to five integration points to test.